Bam, and there you have it. Now you have relative search volume and trending keyword data from the unofficial Google API in Python. Finance family, it's your other brother, Adam Git Bags. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get relative search volume and trending keyword data from the Google Trends in Python. Now this is important because you can do a lot of bag getting activities with this data. So for example, if you're doing SEO, you can do your keyword research here for blog articles. If you're doing e-commerce, you can find trending products to add to your store. Or if you're doing degenerate gambling activities, then you can find, you know, if, let's say you wanted to see if there was a linear relationship between search volume and price, then you could do some analysis there. So let's go ahead, jump into it. Google search PyTrend docs. Then here, the first one's gonna be pypy.org. Let's click in there. We're definitely gonna need that. The next, Google search Google Trends, and we can use this just to visualize the results that we get from our code are accurate to what's coming out of the web app. So here we are on the Python docs. Let's scroll down to installation. Let's copy out this pip install PyTrends. And if you're using Anaconda, then you can just come over here, go to environments, go to base, and then open up a terminal here, pop that command, and go ahead and run that. Once that gets installed, then you can go back here and open up your spider. So we flip back over to the docs. We can copy this to the next block out here, which is gonna connect us to Google. So it's got to import, then it's got our connection request here. So here we are on the script. All of my scripts are available on GitHub. I'll post that link in the description so you can follow along with the code you see in the video here. I've just pasted in this block from the docs here. And then I've got a couple other imports here just in case. So let's go ahead and run these imports and just make sure everything works. All right, it looks good, no errors. So back to the docs here. It looks like they give you some information on connecting a proxy and then setting your timeout here and you could read about it right here but let's go ahead and go down here to build our first payload so you can copy this and paste this into your script we'll use this as the first example so here i've changed our keyword to recession and then i've also created another keyword list here that has five different items now five is the max that you can use but we'll just save this for later here's our first payload it has a keyword list there with one item it has all categories and then we have time frames so let's take a look at time frames in the documentation so if you scroll down here under common api parameters we have time frame information so we're just using this default time frame information for our first example but you could also look at all time frames then you can use specific dates we'll get into that you can even have a more granular look by using hourly data here then they also have current time minus time pattern which is just from today and then you specify the look back period so also interesting you can set your geographical region and then here we have different filters so you can look at images or YouTube as well as Google search so now that we understand these parameters Parameters. Let's go ahead and take a look at interest over time. So you can copy this out. What I've done is I've assigned this to a variable here. After you build the payload, then you can go ahead and run these functions. So all I did was I set this variable here and then I've plotted the data. But if we take a look at the variable, we can see that we get a data frame back that has daily data here. And then we have our keyword up top as a column. And then we have the relative trend data right here. So I've plotted the relative volume data here. Let's go ahead and compare that against Google Trends in the web app. So as you can see, the graphs are very similar here. So it looks like everything's working. Now up next, what we're gonna do is just take a look at a five item keyword list. So I've ran that there to refresh our keyword list. Then we're gonna rebuild our payload. And then we're gonna do the same thing there. We're just gonna take a look at the data frame. Looks like we have all of our daily data. And then we have in our columns, all of our keywords. And then we have our relative search volume information right here. So this is what a five-year chart of the data looks like. All right, that was fun, but now let's take a look. Instead of the last five years of data, we'll take a look at the last 12 months. And you can see the parameter that we're using for time frame is this current time minus time pattern. It's just today minus 12 months. So you can see here's the last 12 months of data. So here's the chart of our 12 month data. You can see these blockchain keywords are having some correlation here. So up next, we're gonna take a look at the specific dates time frame here so we can cherry pick a specific date range. So as you can see there, we're just looking at about 45 days from the end of 2016 to the beginning of 2017. So you can see the data there and then here is our chart. So if you look back in the docs, we have multi-range interest over time and historical hourly interest, unfortunately, couldn't get those to work. But luckily we have a workaround for those. Let's look at minute data over the last four hours and we're gonna use the now minus four hours as our time frame here. And as we can see from our 
our data frame here, we do have minute data, and then we have all of our columns as our keywords here. And as we can see here, our chart is much more granular. Awesome, so up next, we're gonna look at our hour data for the last seven days. We're gonna use now and then minus seven days as our time frame. And as you can see from our timestamps there, it is hourly data, and then we have our data again here, and here is our chart. Awesome, up next, we're gonna look at more hourly data, but we're gonna specify a time frame. So as you can see here, the date parameters are a bit different. They include an hour component there. So you need to have T for time and then you have an hour. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get the previous seven days worth of data, but starting seven days ago. So as you can see, that was a great success. And then we have our chart here as well. Now you might be saying to yourself, if we got the last seven days of data and then we got seven days worth of data before that, it's all in our granularity. Could you make some type of algorithm that just goes back and gets a larger data set of more granular search volume data? So if you're gonna concatenate all this data, you have to be very careful and familiar with the data because this is relative search volume data. So you have to understand if you change your time frame, does that change the relative basis. So does that make sense? I don't mean to go down like a disclaimer rabbit hole or whatever, but you need to be very careful about if you're going to concatenate data like this and make a business decisions. Awesome. Now that we got all that disclaimer BS out the way, let's keep sending it. We got interest by region here and you can specify a resolution. So here we're going to look at country level, um, but they do have a couple other parameters and you can also include low volume regions. So if you look at the data, you can see our geographical location here and then you can also see all of your keywords and the respective values now next we're gonna move on to related topics but what we need to do is instead of looking at a five item keyword list we need to look at a single item keyword list so I'm gonna go ahead and just comment this out and then uncomment this so now we can just look at a single keyword and then we're gonna go ahead and run our pie trends related topics all right, we look at the data. Bruh. I'm going to rebuild the payload here and we're going to just use the previous 12 months. And now we are good to run our related topics query. All right, as you can see here, it's a dictionary. So let's look at the keys. So our key is the first keyword on the list. So we'll use that as our key and then it'll return us another dictionary. So you can look at the keys. And when you look at the keys, we have rising and top as other keys. So let's go ahead and take a look at rising related topics. All right, here is a data frame. So let's take a look at some of the columns we can look through and then let's go ahead and look through topic title. That sounds interesting. So here we have related topics to our keyword and you can see they're all kind of financial sounding. So up next, we can look at the value for our top keys. It looks like another data frame here. Awesome, so similar columns and then we can take a look at topic titles and then we can see our topic titles here which are all very financy. Next in the docs, we have related queries here. So let's go ahead and let's run that. All right. We can see it's another dictionary. So let's take a look at the keys. Looks like it's our keyword again. So we'll just look at the first item on our keyword list as our key. And then we have another set of dictionaries. So let's look at the keys. Again, it's top and rising. So we'll just take a look at here as a data frame has query. And then so here is a related query there. And then it has a value associated with it. And it just looks like everybody wants to know what that recession do. Next, we can take a look at top and it looks like, again, top queries that are related. You look at the columns, it's the same. And so obviously we can just add query and then we can take a look at our top queries uh, that are related. Up next in the docs, we have trending searches and then you can search by geographical region. So let's take a look at those. All right, very interesting. We have our US trending searches. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I guarantee you this is how some of those clickbaity YouTubers get their title tags. Talking about some Jimmy Carter and Christian Atsu had clinical depression after the Bad Bunny and Chris Brown concert. All right, and then if we look at Japan trending, just what I expected, the Soul Brothers. Awesome, next. So we have our real-time search trends. And again, you can specify by geographical region there. So we can see the data here. It looks like you gotta dig through this, but you know, I'll just leave that up to you. Up next, we have our top charts and you can specify a geographical location here. And then you also need to input a year. 
So let's go ahead and see what's popping in 2022. Well, I got bad news. We have Wordle at the top of the list. If that doesn't tell you everything you need to know. Next, we have suggestions and you need to put a keyword in there. So we're gonna just go ahead and use the first item in our keyword list, which is recession. So went ahead and ran that. Looks like we have a bunch of data that's not useful. So I'd be very careful about how you use that. All right, and last but not least, we got categories here and it looks like a dictionary. So let's take a look at the keys. Looks like we have children, name, and ID. Let's take a look at name. It looks like we have all categories. So let's find the children of all categories. All right, it's a list. So let's take a look at the first item in the list. Looks like another dictionary. So let's take a look at the keys. Again, it's the same format. So let's take a look at the name. It looks like arts and entertainment. So let's see who are the children of arts and entertainment. Another list. What a surprise. And then we could take a look at the first item of that list. It's gonna be celebrity news and entertainment, and then we have the ID. So if you wanna specify category IDs, so if you wanna specify category IDs, then now you know how to parse it out. Just add ID to the end of that. Bam, and there you have it. Now you have relative search volume and trending keyword data from the unofficial Google API in Python. Please don't use what I showed you for evil. Only do good with it, and don't do degenerate gambling activities. Anyways fam if you like the content subscribe to the channel come join the finance family we're growing appreciate everybody who's supporting you can always buy me a coffee as always dodge those red candles and let's go get these bags